In my last video, we learned all about Nexium, the multi-level marketing company that morphed into a full-fledged sex cult, where women were branded with the founder's initials and forced to perform sexual acts all under the guise of self-improvement. Nexium may seem like an extreme case of MLM and gone wrong, but we have to ask the question, why did Nexium founder Keith Rainier choose multi-level marketing to be the vessel in which he grew his cult? If you haven't watched part one, please do so now. In part one, we discussed the cult-like beliefs and practices of the group and how a secret society emerged within the group that was eventually outed as a sex cult and human trafficking ring headed by Rainier himself. Trust me, it's as messed up as it sounds. In order to call multi-level marketing schemes cults, we must evaluate them using a widely accepted metric. We can't just call them cults and be done with it. Cult psychologist Stephen Hassan's Bite model is an excellent resource and has already been used by many to categorize MLMs as cults. Hassan himself categorizes MLMs as commercial cults, or cults operating as for-profit organizations. The Bite model describes the four components of cult manipulation, behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. If a group meets some or all of the items listed under the four components, they can be thought of as a destructive cult. The Bite model has roots in renowned psychologist Robert J. Lifton's writings on thought reform, commonly referred to as brainwashing and totalism. Totalism describes an organization or a movement's desire to control every aspect of an individual's life from their behavior to their thoughts. Hassan's Bite model reflects Lifton's ideas on totalism in that the four components encompass every area of an individual's life that is vulnerable to undue influence. MLMs can be totalistic in nature, although not all MLMs seek that level of control over their members and not all members experience the same level of cult manipulation. Factors such as a distributor's rank, their upline, and the type of products they sell can all determine the level of cult indoctrination. That being said, a majority of MLMs do meet the Bite model cult criteria. In fact, they almost have to use cult tactics to keep members involved in a business model that's been proven time and time again to fail. As I go through the Byte model to evaluate MLM cult tactics, I won't be hitting on every item listed under each component. I'm only going to be going over the items that I have found to be highly prevalent in MLMs, even though some MLMs may hit every single item in the Byte model. It is also not required for a group to meet every item to be considered a destructive cult. Behavior control. Promote dependence and obedience. When someone signs up to be a distributor for an MLM, they aren't just signing up to sell a product. Honestly, the product itself is probably not what sold someone on one of these schemes. MLMs pitch their opportunity as an entire lifestyle, as a way for someone to take control of their life and gain financial freedom. Have you found your calling, your sense of purpose? It's an amazing thing where we can just kind of go where we want to go, work where we want to work from. Think about how many lives you can touch with that financial freedom and time freedom and be able to touch people all around the world. It's common in many MLMs for new distributors to be asked to create something called their why. A why is a written confessional or video often posted on social media describing why the individual has decided to join their MLM. Their why is often a personal and specific life goal, such as being able to stay home with your kids or being able to pay for a sick family member's medical bills. This results in the individual making a deep-rooted emotional connection to the MLM. Once this emotional connection has been established, it is far more likely for someone to view their MLM business as a way to reach whatever goal they spelled out in their why, even if no real steps towards this goal are being made. Even if someone is consistently losing money in their MLM, they will still view the MLM as a key to their financial freedom. Keeping the cycle of dependency going, uplines routinely encourage their downlines to remain focused on their goals and remind them that if they just work a little bit harder, they can turn their dreams into a reality. As a self-help MLM, Nexium promoted dependency on the group's teachings as the only way to reach true happiness in life. Members were so devoted to the group that they were willing to endure physical and emotional abuse in the hopes that it would make them better and stronger people in the end. Sarah Edmondson withstood her flesh being burned for over an hour because she viewed it as just another step towards self-improvement. Deprive you of seven to nine hours of sleep. Although many MLMs like to claim that you can make a livable income by doing part-time work, this is rarely the case. In fact, many ex-MLMers report that they spent upwards of 50 to 60 hours a week on their business and hardly turned a profit or lost money. Some were expected to return their uplines calls or texts even in the middle of the night. And there are countless stories of distributors working their business while on family vacations and holidays. And even one boss babe worked her business while in active labor at the hospital. It's extremely difficult to think critically or make healthy choices when chronically fatigued. 
Rainier used this fact to his advantage in Nexium and conducted training sessions that lasted 12 hours or more a day, every day for weeks on end. Exploit you financially. This is where MLMs seriously take the cake. The amount of financial exploitation that occurs in these companies is just staggering. To join an MLM, you have to purchase a starter kit or build an initial inventory. This can range from under $100 to over $5,000 depending on the company. MLMs claim that this is just an initial investment to build your business, and any money that you will invest will quickly be recouped and then some if you work hard enough and build a strong downline. The problem is, it's nearly impossible to make any money in an MLM. The MLM business structure is based on the assumption of an infinite market and a virgin market, neither of which actually exist. If you truly were to recruit three friends who then recruit three friends who then recruit three friends, you would exceed the entire population of the world in just 15 levels of downline. This business model just doesn't make any mathematical sense. According to the Federal Trade Commission, 99.7% of those involved in MLMs never turn a profit or actually lose money. So less than 1% make any money at all, and these are usually those who got in on the ground floor. MLM should be thought of as a lost certainty rather than an income opportunity. Rainier centered his call on the MLM business structure. Most MLMs charge a couple hundred dollars for a starter kit, but Rainier went to the extreme and charged thousands and thousands of dollars per training course in Nexium. Information control. Deliberately withhold and distort information. MLMs are notorious for withholding and distorting information. Historically, MLMs were wary of revealing actual distributor income. However, there's been recent public outcries for more transparency in the direct selling industry, and that's forced many companies to release income disclosure statements. Unsurprisingly, the income disclosure statements that have been released are consistent with the FTC's findings that 99.7% of MLM participants fail. However, MLMs are really sneaky, and while many companies are willing to release their distributors' income statistics, they're also simultaneously releasing promotional videos touting that financial freedom can only be found through their MLM opportunity. They also feature select testimonials on their websites of rare successful distributors and instruct their distributors to advertise the opportunity to others as a road to wealth. I felt like I was, you know, bringing extra money in and I was passionate about it. I had my own business and just worked extremely hard, as hard as I could for a year. And I actually hit the top of the company in one year. I joined in October 2014 and I hit black status in October 2015. And unfortunately, anecdotes are more persuasive than actual data to most people. And MLMs know this. The allure of exponential wealth, despite the evidence to the contrary, draws in countless innocent victims. Additionally, people have the tendency to view themselves as an exception to the rule. This is a cognitive bias known as illusory superiority. Someone falling into this cognitive bias is likely to acknowledge the fact that only a small percentage of network marketers are successful, but at the same time, they will say that they know that they specifically will be a part of this small percentage because they have better marketing skills, a harder work ethic, or more of a desire to be successful than the other 99% of people that try. Many distributors looking to recruit others into their scheme also deliberately withhold certain information as to not scare off potential recruits. They might say something like, all you need to start your business is a starter kit and a few hours a week to spare, and you'll be guided by an encouraging group of women the entire time. Meanwhile, leaving out that you'll be expected to spend money on promotional material and party supplies, in addition to keeping a large quantity of product on hand, be forced to put long hours into working your business, and be tied to the instructions of your upline that is ultimately making money off of you. Nexium portrayed itself as a somewhat eccentric self-help group to outsiders, and kept the whole sex enslavement of women and ideas that Rainier was somewhat of a god behind closed doors. Most of Nexium didn't even know that DOS existed unless they happened to be female and targeted by their upline to join the group. I mean, if a Nexium member said to a potential recruit, hey, do you want to join my sex cult? They would probably get the cops called on them pretty quickly. But if they purposely misrepresent what Nexium is and work slowly to brainwash the recruit until they've bought in on the more cult-like ideas of the group, they will have someone primed for involvement in groups such as DOS. Forbid you from speaking with ex-members or critics. One of the telltale signs that a group is a destructive cult is if they force their adherents to cut ties with anyone who criticizes or leaves the group, even if this means cutting ties with family or close friends. The group then becomes a sole source of information or point of reference for a member. A member may even see the group as their true family. Many MLMs promote this type of friendship damaging and family dividing behavior. 
The MLM itself may say that they don't condone this, but it sure is prevalent among distributors, especially the higher up in rank you go. It is really not uncommon for MLMers to unfriend, block, or otherwise disconnect from any friends or family that don't support their business. MLMs teach their distributors that anyone who voices any criticism is only doing so because they're a hater and jealous of your success, and not that they may have some valid criticisms. Imagine this, you're at a party and someone who knows you work in the network marketing industry randomly approaches you and starts saying that it is a scam or a pyramid scheme. They basically put you in a spot and you're confused what to do. This person is a hater. Now that you have an idea about who haters are, it's time to learn how to deal with them. Walk away. This is probably the easiest thing you can do. Haters want your attention. So instead of confronting the person, just walk away. Rainier did all he could to isolate his followers and keep Nexium's bizarre teachings only within the group. He discouraged anyone from having contact with those outside the group, and those who questioned his teachings were labeled as suppressives who love evil. Nexium went as far as locking one member in a room for two years with no contact with the outside world whatsoever. Gaslight you to make you doubt your own memory. Voicing any concerns or doubts within an MLM is highly discouraged, and those who do are quickly gaslighted by their upline. Gaslighting is a type of psychological manipulation in which the perpetrator attempts to make the victim doubt his or her own memory or sanity through misdirection, contradiction, or denial. Gaslighting is commonly used in MLMs when a distributor realizes that no matter how much effort they put into their business, they are unable to make an income. When this concern is voiced, they're likely to hear things such as, you're just not working the business hard enough, or it's not the company that's failing you, it's you that's failing you, from their upline. If a distributor voices any suspicion that the MLM business structure might be inherently flawed, their upline quickly misdirects and accuses the individual of being inherently flawed. Thought control. Instill black versus white, us versus them, good versus evil thinking. Successful cults are skilled in the art of redefining truth, or what Hassan describes as creating their own map of reality. They often require their members to think in black and white terms, rather than taking a nuanced approach to evaluating new information. In MLMs, new members are taught to accept the teachings of the group as doctrine. You're either an adherent to this doctrine, or you're actively working against it. Factual information that is publicly available is twisted by the MLM into a new kind of truth. For example, many alternative health MLMs perpetuate rumors that the pharmaceutical industry is hiding cures for cancer because they want to continue to make money off of expensive drugs. And of course, the MLM just happens to have a natural cure for cancer and is willing to sell it to you for a reasonable price. This us versus them, good versus evil thinking is especially dangerous because it can often lead to the dehumanization of the opposing side. Discrimination, abuse, and even extreme violence are often excused in cults because a victim is thought of as deserving punishment by association with the wrong side. Nexium took extreme measures to combat those that opposed them by attempting to dig up dirt on their critics to use as blackmail. This abhorrent behavior was justified in the mind of Rainier's followers since critics are automatically labeled as Luciferians. Use loaded language and cliches to stop complex thoughts. Loaded language refers to wording that invokes emotion or draws on specific stereotypes in order to persuade. MLM boss babes are the queens of using loaded language. For example, even referring to their scheme as an opportunity has certain connotations. The word opportunity implies that there is some quantifiable positive outcome that can be experienced by joining the MLM. However, we all know that very few who seize this opportunity reap any reward. Thought-stopping cliches are quick sayings or phrases that on the surface appear sound, but fall apart really easily with any small amount of scrutiny. They allow people to rationalize their beliefs or actions without having to actually call them into question. In the MLM community, a common rebuttal to the accusation that MLMs are similar to classic pyramid schemes is to say that, well, corporate America is the real pyramid scheme because the CEO is at the top making millions, while the blue collar workers are at the bottom making a fraction of what the CEO makes. If someone wants to tell me this is a pyramid scheme, fine. They can think that all they want because what they're involved in right now is the biggest scheme in life. While this may seem valid at first glance, it really oversimplifies the complexity of an organizational structure by assuming that the CEO does not have any higher qualifications, such as education or experience, which would afford him a higher paying job. It also ignores the fact that even though low-level employees may make less than the CEO, 
Their salaries are still contractual, competitive within their field, and must at least meet minimum wage standards required by law. On the contrary, pyramid schemes are, by definition, entities without salaried employees, which are designed to funnel capital to a few top members based on recruitment alone. Before the Nexium branding ritual was carried out, Rainier instructed his right-hand woman, Allison Mack, to tell the woman that the branding was vital to their personal growth because pain is how we know how much we love. At first glance, this phrase seems plausible as most people are familiar with the pain of a breakup or losing someone they deeply loved. Often this pain highlights how much we truly love someone. However, this thought-stopping cliche insinuates that pain and love are somehow connected and that we cannot know love without pain. In fact, it is quite possible to love without pain and pain definitely does not always bring about love. Sometimes pain is just pain. Induce hypnotic or trance states to indoctrinate. Have you ever watched a clip from an MLM conference? If so, have you noticed how almost all MLM conferences come off more like a church service or an old-fashioned tent revival rather than a professional business conference? This is not on purpose. Techniques to induce trance states are commonly used during MLM conferences. These techniques often involve listening and possibly dancing to inspirational music, reciting specific phrases, and then being told stories of overcoming difficulties and finding relief through the MLM business. You are here because I'm here to ignite something in you. <laughs> to unleash your greatness because it's your time. Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, it's my time. Many conference goers report experiencing an epiphany or some sort of revelation, often accompanied by an emotional release in which it becomes clear to them that they must work harder at their MLM business. Some even start believing that God himself has ordained them to help others through their business. This is a mind control technique referred to as an engineered epiphany. Rainier used this technique by having his followers repeat specific mantras while sharing their darkest secrets and pain, which he then later exploited by insisting that the only way for them to overcome these past hurts was to follow Nexium's teachings. Emotion control. Promote feelings of guilt, shame, and unworthiness. Guilt and shame are often powerful motivators. So many people are guilt-tripped into joining an MLM in the first place because they're told if they don't, then they don't care about their family's health, wellness, or finances. Once involved, they will continue to be guilt-tripped into making unnecessary purchases to reach a certain rank, spamming their friends and family about the MLM, and making lots and lots of posts about the MLM on their social media. They are even shamed if they don't fork out the hundreds and hundreds of dollars it costs to attend their MLM's conference. And yes, MLMers have to pay to attend their own company's conference. In Nexium, Rainier taught his followers that the way they thought and perceived the world was inherently flawed. He claimed that everyone is ultimately responsible for everything that happens in their life, including things that had been done to them, like sexual assault. He then taught that to be released from the guilt they felt for allowing these things to happen in their life, they had to carry out specific actions at his request, which were mostly sexually explicit in nature. Shower you with praise and attention, love bombing. Cold messaging usually involves sending a highly rose-colored message to old friends they haven't spoken to in a while, or to people they don't know at all, inviting them to join their scheme. They may say something like, I've been following your Instagram for a while and judging by your posts, I just know you'd be amazing at my business. Or you're so pretty, you would be great at doing makeup tutorials using my product. The unfortunate reality is the MLMer doesn't really know or even care if someone has strong assets they could bring to their team because it's not about that. All they need is a warm body to place in their downline so they can make a percentage off of their purchases. And yes, I say purchases and not sales because almost all capital floated to the top in an MLM is made from distributor purchases and not sales to actual customers. Ex-cult members of Nexium described Rainier as a very charismatic and charming individual that they felt made them feel special. Many women in Nexium were eventually conned into having a romantic, often sexual relationship with Rainier because he convinced them that they were the one, even though he had numerous relationships going on at once. It is much more difficult for someone to see the warning signs when they are constantly being bombarded by compliments. Shun you if you disobey or disbelieve. Cult members rarely have any meaningful relationships outside of the cult itself because they are instructed to break ties with anyone who disagrees with their involvement. So what happens when someone tries to leave a cult? Many report that when they try to leave their MLM, they lost the majority of the friendships they had within the MLM. Friendships they thought were based on mutual respect turned out to be contingent on their involvement with the MLM. 
They are shunned and told that they are just sore losers who didn't work their business hard enough. Why can't I move forward in my, in my MLM opportunity? And I'll tell you exactly, exactly why right now. This is the truth. The reason is, is that you are lousy. You're lousy. You're lousy at what you do. Shunning is a common tactic used in cults to keep those who may shed light on the dangers of the group away from those who are still involved. Nexium labeled anyone not in the group as suppressives, and those who had been involved but left were believed to have undergone what they called the fall. Nexium even went as far as launching investigations into their critics in an attempt to find damaging information they could later use as blackmail. Now that we've worked our way through the bite model, it's pretty easy to see the commonalities between MLMs and extreme cults like Nexium. Of course, most MLMs have not become as destructive as Nexium. What is frightening though, is that all it would take for them to become this destructive is for someone with ill intent, someone like Rainier, to grab onto power. All the basic cult manipulation tactics already exist in MLMs, whether it's gaslighting, instilling black and white thinking, or shunning. Now, please do not go to your friends and family that are involved in MLMs and accuse them of being in a sex cult. It's just not true. Nexium is an outlier in the MLM community, and no other MLM I know of has become this detrimental to those involved. However, if you are currently in an MLM or considering joining one, please know that the MLM system is inherently cult-like. If you decide to move forward with your MLM business, please keep in mind the cult manipulation tactics that have been mentioned in this video. And if you happen to run into them in your MLM journey, which you probably will, please treat them as red flags. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about the dangers of MLMs and other cults, please subscribe and ring the bell.